The first time I saw images of flying cars, I have to say I was skeptical. Such pictures are all over the internet. Some of them seem to actually exist. But none of the companies I contacted wished to talk to me. It was top secret, they said, or they didn't have time, or they weren't far enough along, and so on. Only one startup in the Netherlands, called Pal V, said, Come on over, we can show you something. This is a model of what the final product would look like. Here you see it all folded up, and that's the way it'll be on the road. These here are the rotary blades. They'll have a mast in the middle, and the tail unit is inserted back here. And so this is how it'll drive on the road. It'll have a total length of four meters and a width of two meters. So it's a very compact vehicle that fits into any parking structure. A prototype was already driven and flown during a test run five years ago. But a concrete runway and pilot's license are required for the flying car to take off. And I get the impression that handling a car like this is not as easy as you might think. This is your accelerator for flight mode. You push it up and that gives you more power. Whereas in driving mode, you regulate the speed with a conventional accelerator pedal. And you also have a classic steering wheel for driving. In flight mode, you steer with a joystick. The prototype is no longer registered. Maintaining a permanent operating license is very expensive. But the final product, finished and fully registered, is due to hit the market next year. The company has been working on it for nearly 20 years. The team has grown to 40 international engineers located just outside Amsterdam. Combining the functions of a car and an aircraft is no easy task. It's very new, very exciting, very challenging. Uh, lots of challenges every day. Uh, that's what an engineer loves, uh, lots of challenges. What is difficult is weight, so keeping the weight down, because you have this dual functionality, driving and flying, so keeping the weight down is, is very difficult. And the other thing is, is the legislation, so the, the driving on the road, flying in the air, you have two set of rules, and those rules, they, they, they sometimes bite each other, so, you, so to, to manage both at the same time is, is very difficult. The engineers spent years trying to modify a car engine to also function as the engine of an aircraft. Normally the two are incompatible. Investors have kept pumping millions into the startup, even though setbacks have occurred on a regular basis. We thought it was much easier, we thought it would be more like engineering, less invention. Uh, but uh, we concluded, uh, yeah, after years of work, that, that uh, it's definitely a combination of, uh, of uh, inventions and a lot of hard work. But it is more difficult than we uh, expected, yeah. Now, finally, the PAL V Liberty is said to be almost finished. The driving part of the flying car is already complete. It's an odd-looking vehicle that leans into curves, like a motorcycle. It can travel up to 180 kilometers an hour. And the cockpit is also finished. Both parts now need to be put together. I had a slightly queasy feeling as we started down the runway in the flying part. I'm afraid of heights. The propeller started up, and in just a few meters, we were airborne. So this is what it feels like when a flying car takes off, heading straight for our destination and leaving roads and traffic jams behind. Now that the flying car will soon be on the market, potential customers are calling almost daily and requesting test flights. There are even some pre-orders, although the PAL V Liberty will cost a hefty 500,000 euros. We recently had a press release and our YouTube video has got over 5 million clicks so far. That means people are interested in flying cars. Maybe it's not such a crazy idea after all. Flying cars soaring above congested roads. When the Palvi Liberty goes on sale next year, 
We'll find out if it really is ready for takeoff.